What's going on guys, it's Matt Jacobs here and I just want to talk about this little guy right here, the Fujifilm X-M1. Um, I really like this little camera and I want to talk about the upsides and downsides and maybe why you'd want to get this camera. But first, I want to give a quick shout out to Chris Orange whose video I saw about this camera first. He's a, a British dude who he loves Fujifilm, old, old Fujifilm cameras especially. I saw his video on the XM1 and that's really the reason why I got it. So shout out to you, Chris. I love your videos. And um, let's talk a little bit more about this guy. So my preferred setup of this camera is just having the, it is an interchangeable lens camera, which is the first really awesome upside to it. So it is the Fujifilm X-Trans APS-C size sensor. So that's a great sensor for this camera body size. And having this little pancake lens on it is my preferred setup because this is and this is a plasticky body more plasticky than the the upper tier like xt3 and other fuji cameras but this lens is also made of plastic so this together makes a super lightweight setup i mean i could just carry this around all day and hardly even notice it's in my hand or just put it around my neck or whatever put it in my bag but the, the focal length is great i love the this pancake lens's focal length it's right between a 23 and a 35 or full frame equivalent 35 and 50 which are the two most popular walk around lenses so this is the best of both worlds it's great um so that's an upside of the camera even though it's plasticky it's it's lighter and this specific setup is just great for portability and just practicality. Um, the plastic, the plastic nature of the body is also kind of a downside. Um, the buttons aren't the most pleasing to press, especially it's a stark difference from the buttons on the X-T3 or some of my other cameras, especially the shutter button. It, it sometimes, you know, isn't super, super responsive. And uh, like, I got this second hand on eBay, an, another upside to it, I got it second hand for $240, which is amazing, amazing value for what you can get out of this camera, which I'll get into in a little bit. But this function button here, which is also the Wi-Fi button to send pictures right to your phone. And it's also, I have it set up to set the ISO. It sometimes sticks. So, you know, it's not the absolute highest quality control. So that's another downside to it. It has a built-in flash, which actually is more flexible than the built-in flash in some other Fuji cameras because you can bounce it off the ceiling instead of having it pointing directly at your subject, which is, is really useful actually if, if you're in a super low light scenario and you can just bounce that off the ceiling and you don't have to have another flash. Uh, another upside, the accessories you can get for it are very cheap. So, I mean, this strap is just a standard camera strap. I got that on Amazon for like maybe $6. And the leather case I have for this, which actually has a screen protecting back to it that you can snap on whenever you're traveling with it. This was like $10, $15. So accessories are also very cheap. Uh, another upside, it has the Fujifilm X-Trans sensor in it, and it's an ASPC size sensor, so it's a very small camera, but has the same sized sensor as the X-T3 and all the other Fuji cameras, so it's not a smaller sensor, it's not like a point and shoot or whatever. So you can get exceptional image quality out, the, out of this, and um, this is actually in the same body as Fujifilm has an XA line of cameras, which is like their lowest tier, most consumer grade cameras. And they have this plasticky body as well, but they have a Bayer sensor, which is what pretty much everyone but Fuji uses. So this is the only iteration of that body of camera that has their special Fuji sensor in it, um, which is really cool. Uh, they never made an XM2. This is actually a 10 year old camera about. Um, so it's, it's also kind of like a cool collector item for, in my opinion, but the X-Trans 1 sensor and the earlier Fuji X-Trans sensors are just something that people rant and rave about. The X-Trans 1 and X-Trans 2 especially because they have more of a filmic look to them. The images rendered just more like Fujifilm's old actual film used to. So that maybe the colors aren't as true to life as the later iterations, X-Trans 4, X-Trans 3, um, that are in the, the other newer Fuji cameras, but in my opinion, the colors are more pleasing. Like the, the the images from this, which has the X-Trans 1 sensor, and the images from my X-T10, which has the X-Trans 2 sensor, um, I find myself editing the raw files less than on my X-T3, just because I like the colors more and the way the contrast is. There's just, there's just something about it that's really nice. Another upside is it has a flippy screen. Now it's definitely not as nice as like the X-T, 10's flippy screen or the X-T3, but it has a flippy screen, but it, you know, it 
really should have a flippy screen because it also, a downside, it does not have a viewfinder. That is your only, this flippy screen is your only way of judging your framing while you're shooting. So it's actually pretty nice and bright considering it's a you know, pretty old LCD at this point. Um, but you know, it works. It works and it, it works fine. And I've taken great images with this camera. I think I'll hopefully have shown you some by now or I'll show you some more uh, as I'm speaking right now. But it takes great images. It has a 16 megapixel sensor. So that's X-Trans 1 had 16 megapixels. The X-Trans 2, I believe, had 24. And the X-Trans 3 and 4 have 26. I believe that is the case. So, um, smaller images than you know 4k resolution images versus like 6k resolution images on the other um newer x-trans sensors but honestly hardly can tell the difference and it's like it's not even like noticeable that it still looks fantastic trust me even if you like pixel peep there's still plenty of sharpness in this and it's just honestly impressive the image quality you can get out of something that feels you know kind of cheaper um, so <laughs> I keep saying it, it's kind of like cheap feeling like why would you want to get that? Um, the main reason is maybe you want to get into the Fuji x system but you don't have a thousand fifteen hundred dollars to drop on a camera body and a lens so maybe you get a, an X M1 on eBay for 250 bucks and you get the pancake lens that I'm using for 300 bucks used secondhand and for only a couple hundred bucks versus a thousand you're in the Fuji system and you already have your first lens and then maybe you know eventually you get a high a better body and you already have your first lens and you can start building your selection of lenses so it could be your first step into that system if that's something that you're interested in getting into um it also takes the same battery um the battery door it's not my absolute favorite you have to so the sd card goes in the battery slot which is you know not the best but it didn't really bother me that much and the battery door doesn't stay closed you have to do that and latch it so that's also not quite as nice but it takes the same battery as my xt3 and every a Fuji film camera I have. I don't have the X-T4 or anything that takes the newer, bigger batteries, so it's kind of cool that I can use all the same batteries in all my cameras, but just one more note about this camera that I definitely notice is it definitely has an older way of focusing. It's definitely based on contrast, so it doesn't have like a, a thumbstick to move your thing around, so you hit up on the D-pad and you move your focus point around, and when you set your focus point, you need to make sure it's it's over a part of your image like say I use this a lot for landscapes it needs to be in a part that there's shadow and uh, like a, a patch of light because it it needs that contrast to be able to judge focus it has a hard time if it's like in low light especially so you're not gonna have all the best autofocus and features if you get this camera but maybe that's not what you're looking for maybe either you're just looking for your first step into the fuji system or you're like me and you intentionally wanted something that would slow you down and you can shoot manually and um you know take your time and really make you think about your framing and everything because it's not like you can just snap off like five pictures here and there like the xt3 just doesn't have that capacity to do that so it makes you take your time and be more systematic about your approach which can be a good thing so yeah that's pretty much all that i can think about when it comes to this camera i kind of spelled out why you might be looking for this camera or maybe you were looking for this camera and something i said has informed you that maybe you don't actually want it it is going to slow you down it's not going to be the most premium experience but if you're a results driven person and maybe it doesn't absolutely matter to you that the buttons aren't super nice maybe you know you just look at the pictures that it, that result from it then then this can be for you and it does take exceptional pictures and i'm blown away every time just thinking like wow that took that picture that's just crazy to me so yeah consider the fujifilm xm1 shout out to chris orange for uh bringing it to light to me and I hope you enjoyed this I want to make more Fujifilm content it seems that the you know this channel was kind of stagnant for a while and it's now starting to pick up for in subscribers and it's been since I started talking about Fujifilm which I'm really passionate about anyway so that's great for me I can just keep talking about the cameras and lenses that I have just go through them one by one so we covered the XM1 maybe I can talk specifically about this lens a little bit more but I basically covered most of my thoughts on it it's just a great versatile tiny little lens that is exceptionally good for its size 
just like this camera. Anyway, <laughs> leave a like on this video, leave a comment down below. Do you want to see about my X-T10? Do you want a more, another video about the X-T3, kind of the more technical aspects of it? Maybe I can talk about some audio equipment because this, you know, this is the Blue Yeti Pro. I mean, everybody uses a Blue Yeti, but I think this setup I have right here is, is portable and it does a great job for sound. So maybe we could just talk more generally about just how to make videos because that's something I'm passionate about as well. But that's all I got to say. I've been rambling here at the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go out and buy an XM1 if you want to get into the Fuji system and you have a limited budget and you think you can deal with all its downfalls because there's definitely a lot of positives that will make you happy to own this camera. All right.